Hello and welcome back to the Halfstone Arena. Today we're playing Warlock again and as you can see here I've actually played four games already and uh, we're playing Warlock and we're four games in because the last arena run I did was as Warlock and I went 4-3 and it was really bad. And now the main problem I had in the deck that I was using in that was I had just a weird kind of meh deck and I really wasn't happy with it and I talked about how I had too much discard from like things like Succubus, um, and I had uh, Soulfire, and I had one of those. I had two Succubuses, a Soulfire, and uh, what was it? Um, the five seven charge Doom Guard, I think it is, that discards two cards. So that sucked, and I had like no imps. I've got three blood imps in this one, and the Mortal Coil. Sadly, I don't have any of those beautiful Demon Fires for two mana. However, the deck still is really nice. Um, I feel a lot more confident with this deck and I just wanted to show you the difference that can happen when you are able to actually pick cards that are good as opposed to picking a lot of bad ones and I kind of got unlucky. But anyway, we're 4-0 now so we're going to hop into an arena and uh, try out some stuff. Yes, Riley, I am recording. However, I can't tell you that right now based on me searching for a game and being recording. Anyway, um... So, the point of this deck kind of is low, 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 low mana cost minions and just spam them out there, beat the crap out of everything they put there, and it's also kind of hard to deal with, with AoE. Usually, you'd kill it by, you know, just doing like a holy fire or a consecrate kind of thing. But because I've got blood imps and three of them, I can actually buff the crap out of everything. Oh, wow, this looks good. Happy with that. So we're going to coin out a Flame Imp and a Blood Imp straight away. So we're going to have a 3-3 free free and a 1-1, one one, turn 1. <laughs> Insane. God, these cards are so good. Um, and then, I guess, followed up by a Geomancer, unless I want to draw a card. Depends on the situation. Um, and then maybe by then we'll have drawn something that we can play on turn 3. Pass the turn, don't have anything. Pass the turn, don't have anything. Come on. Come on, Mage. To Mage. Magek? Magek? I don't know how to say words. Is that not beautiful? This is the whole point of Warlock Arena, to do exactly that. It's like as good as coining out a Defias Ringleader. Probably better. Technically, it's one less damage, but it's a lot more survivability. Because uh, the other combo I'm talking about is when you coin and you're playing as a rogue and you play Defy String Leader and you get a 2 2 and a 2 1 on turn 1. Pretty insane. Alright, I can deal with that. And I will. I will. That is beautiful. So I've got two Blood Imps down now. So they're giving an AoE buff to all allied minions to have plus 1 health. Since there's two of them, I'm getting plus 2 health. That's usually a free 2. It became a free four. Mental. Alright, um. Is that a vaporize? It can't be. No. Looks like it's a mirror entity. So we're just gonna tap here. Can use that to kill it. Mirror entity, you place the cards, you play a minion, and then uh, it copies that minion. I can't really just give him one. My Skype's not busy. Whoops, sorry about that. We have now back and um, that's a shame. Um, so basically he kind of colded with his entire turn. Kind of cold is now four mana based on the patch. Um, and he froze these two. Next turn he's probably going to kill the flame imp with a fire blast. Which is unfortunate for us. I can't give him one of those. Um... That looks good. So, I play this over here to have the stealth in the center to make it awkward for him. We give him one of those. And it's just a 2-4. I just happen to be able to deal with that very well with a 4 damage soul fire. I lose the succubus and that is perfect. That right there is exactly what I wanted to lose. Yes. Thank you. Alright, so he's going to use 2 mana to kill the free one, most likely. You know, I don't know everything he's going to do, but, I mean, it makes sense. And then he plays like a 2 or 3 mana minion. Because that Blood Imp, yep, yeah, there it is. 
Th these imps probably are, are pissing him off a little bit. And they should be, because they're insane. Oh, that's pretty bad. I don't know in what, what choices he would have got there to have to pick that up, but he had to pick it up. Right, so that would make it cost two less. Leave me with one mana, then I could play that or that. They'll really want to do that. Hmm. Oh, I could just play a big guy. I think we're going to ignore that. For now, we're just going to play a big guy and punch him in the face. This kind of deck, I feel, is more of a go kill them now kind of deck. Like, you know, get as much damage in while you can. He has five cards in hand. So he's got one card advantage on me based on cards in hand. And um, one card because he's just drawn one, by the way. So he technically has four to my three. Um, but I do have five minions on field, so I'm still technically in the lead. I'm just worried about that flame strike that's coming up. Wonder what he's going to hit with this 3-3. Uh, free free. Maybe the 2-3? Free? Doesn't look like he's entirely sure himself. What's he doing? There you go, you worked it out. Okay. Ooh. Tempting. Alright, so we have a couple of choices here. I throw down this Iron Beak Owl and then silence something, so probably it'll be the Taunt. Or. It could very well be the Venture Girl Mercenary, which would mean that all of this costs three less mana. I'd be still be left with one mana at the end of the turn, so I can play any of these. But it's still, that'd be pretty insane. But then he just gets like a really nice poly. So if I silence that, and then ignore it, and use this Blood Imp to kill that, because it's hurt. I'm thinking there's a Flame Strike coming next turn, that's why I'm being careful about this. So yeah. So we silence that. <clears throat> we use a Blood Imp to get rid of that. So I'm um, still good by Flame Strike standards. And then we're just going to ignore that, get some nice damage through, and try and get him as low as we can, really. So, if he was to Flame Strike this turn, that would be down to 3 health, and then he could kill it with that, and that's fine. And then that would survive. So I'd have a 2-1, I guess? the end of this turn. Yeah, there it is. I knew it was coming, so I played to it. And now I'm just left with a minion on field, really. I've got a two damage mortal coil with this Geomancer. I definitely want to pump this up. Hmm. He's just flame strikes, so I'm not worried about a second one. These will both be one mana. Yeah, go on, alright, so we're gonna play this. That'll be a 3 3 and a 2 2. But that leads me very open so to a flame strike. Alright, we're gonna play this out, and we're gonna tap. Then we're going to hang on to this. Uh, the reason I didn't play the Blood Imp there, because, you know, that would make it a 2 2 and a 0 5 and everything, is because I want to buff this up as much as I can. So I'm going to play this next turn for one mana, hopefully. That's because of the summoning ball. Um, and then I want to play as many cards as I can to buff it up. So I'll definitely get these two off, most likely. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a 4 4. Maybe I'll get that off because it'll be two damage because of the extra spell damage from this. Um, and then that will be a 5-5, five, five, which will be great. It all kind of depends on what he plays next. And obviously I've got a card to draw next turn as well. And a blood tap, a life tap, sorry, if, uh, if I need to. I mean, we're definitely in the lead right now, obviously. 
But I, I could very well be a turn away from winning based on what he does here. I don't really give a damn about him freezing that because it can't attack. I think maybe he thought that might silence it or something. I don't know. Okay, that's one, two, three, four. Leaving me with four mana. I can tap. Oh my god. Oh, we gotta do that, don't we? We have to. We have to do that. Okay, right. Do this right. Okay. Questing adventurer. Give me a quest. Geomancer. Blood him. Arcane Golem. And then the taunt. I'm going to hang on to that. Okay, this looks really good. Holy shit, that summoning ball just did work! Wow! That was awesome! Oh my god! Jesus! I just placed five minions in one turn and buffed the crap out of that. Holy crap! Flame Strike wouldn't save him. It wouldn't save him. It looks good. It looks good. What a game. What a game. That was awesome. Arkham Golem, man. Underrated. It's beautiful for a finisher. It is the Leroy Jenkins. Slightly worse than Leroy Jenkins. I kind of wish I had a Leroy Jenkins in my deck um, in Constructed, because that would be awesome. Uh, Evans actually has one. Uh, he got it recently. And I'm kind of want kind of want it back. I want, that, I want that myself, you know? Anyway, he's lost. Uh, he plays that, he's got no mana left, and that leaves me with a grand total of six damage, seven damage, kill shot, works for me. Well played. So, there you go, we're now 5-0, and uh, I'm very happy with this deck. It is much, much better than the ridiculously bad one that I was working with in the last arena, but I thought I'd show you anyway. Um, I had no idea. I, I basically started doing this arena on maybe an hour or two after I recorded that one, the previous one that I uploaded. Um, so this is sort of the continuation onto that, um, similar to the Druid Revisit, showing you that I am not all that bad. I just really did did get bad drafts. I didn't even realize I had a Swamp Ooze in this deck. Good, good. That makes me happy. Anyway, guys, we're going to hop into the next game right about now. Okay, welcome to the second game. We're against Jaredin the Paladin. We are lucky enough to have a Blood Imp in our starting hand. We're going first, so we don't want a 4-drop as much as I love the Yeti. And we don't want a Soul Fire because discarding cards this early is a crime. I'm not happy about that fell Guard either. It's not really something that um, you want this early. That's better. That's better. The Summoning Ball's alright, but you know, I don't have many cards in hand right now. So what's he going to do? Usually I'd expect to see a coin and then <clears throat> a 2-drop. Oh wow, he has a 1-drop, okay. So I can't play the Immortal Caller because the I want to use it to draw a card. Um, and if I use it on that, it will not die based on its Divine Shield, which blocks all damage for one, da for one turn of damage, I guess. So I have to hit him before I can get through that. This will put me to free mana uh, my next turn. They coined out a Sword of Justice. Understandable. I have a couple of choices here. Tap and then Mortal Coil uh, using a Blood Imp to attack. Which will give me another card. Or I could just Velgard. And right now, I don't know, he, he, he doesn't actually have all that much to answer it with. Um, you know, he needs four mana to have a Consecrate to have a Hammer of Wrath. 
Um, and he's not got anything down, so I think this turn it's worth it. It's also a free motherfucking seven because of the two blood imps. Turn three, a free seven. Jesus. This is why blood imps are, that are just insane. There's so much value out of your cards. Good, good, uh, good choice by him. So it's a 2 6, and then it pumps out a 2 2 after. Pretty painful for me overall. I really want him to hit the Felguard here with the 1 1 Divine Shield. I really want that. Because I've got a Mortal Coil. That would absolutely be. That would be wonderful. And sadly, he does not, so. It's the right play by him. Where's that Swamp Ooze? Not here. <laughs> Alright, um. So, that will put that down to a, not enough, it will put it down to two. Um, I suppose we just play this then, and ignore him and go for the throw. We have a nice turn five here. Because I expect that'll get hurt. I expect this'll get hurt. But I expect they'll survive. And then a nice heal up will be just wonderful. Dark Scale Healer is ultimately uh, a 5 mana Yeti. Yeah, he's a 4 5 for 4 mana, but he has no battle cry or anything. And then this is just a 4 5 for 5. But you, for that extra mana, you get to restore 2 um, HP to all friendly characters. So that's in that does include your hero. Uh, which is great. Very, very good card. I used to not rate it very highly, but I have come to realize how ridiculous it is. It is just so good. Being able to just get that extra trade can make all the difference. It just means, like, you spend a card and then you trade with something, and you heal it up, and it trades with one or two more things, whereas he just spends one card to lose it. Anyway, it looks like he's in some trouble here. That didn't seem like it needed that long to work out, to me, anyway. There goes his weapon. So we have an interesting turn here. Um, now the obvious play that sprang to mind that I nearly just instantly did, which would have been a foolish thing to do without considering what I've got on the board, is to throw down the Geomancer, do a 2 damage Mortal Coil and draw a card, and then be left with 1 mana to do nothing. Um, as opposed to using this to kill a free, and then it's down to 2 health, dies to either that or that. Or that, really, that would probably be that. Um, I don't really want that. Um, hmm. Okay, so if we play the Geomancer and Mortal Coil, that leaves him with these. I trade with the Imp, it dies, 2 free. Then he has to trade with that and that. So that gets free cards for its 1, which is insane. Um... And then that dies and spawns a 1-1. One, one. So alright, that's that seems really the best uh, play. So 2 damage. Hit that. What do we draw? A Blood Imp. A uh, Flame Imp, sorry. That is perfect. And we're just going to get rid of this 2-2. Two, two. And that's back down to its original health as a 2-3. Go Blood Imps, man. They're insane. A 3-4 Flame Imp. It's one mana right there. Insane. I do need to start drawing cards, though, really badly. <laughs> Not press this once this game, I don't think. I've only got two cards in hand to his five. Right now, he really needs a Consecrate in hand. A Consecrate would kill my Blood Imps and put that to two health, put that to one health, put that to two health. And then he could trade off a lot better. He could kill everything I have on board if he has a Consecrate right now, mm. which would really suck. So I'm thinking about trying to get the most out of this Dark Scale Healer. 
I want to trade as much as I can here and then heal everything back up. But the chances of him ignoring my cards and just attacking me is like not even ex doesn't exist. It's not gonna happen. Wow, we're two mana sea giant. Of course, he's got to kill the cobra. That makes sense. Otherwise, the cobra would have just killed it. And then he just hits with that, I guess. On board right now, I have five, uh, six, seven damage. Not enough. Got some nice use out of the heal there. Put a little bit more damage on the board as well. I kind of need a soul fire here to be able to deal with this. I've got two in the deck. Not seen one yet. Threw one away at the start of the game. Let me think. Been a fairly slow game. We've both taken a time with our turns. Sucks about him having a sea giant there though because I had so many minions on board. He had so many minions on board. That was perfect for him. Couldn't have been better really. Worst thing for him to do now would be to trade with something on, that I've got on the board because everything I've got on the board is probably going to trade irrelevant. Oh god, a 9-9 taunt. If he hits me in the face, that's the best blow for him right now. That's the worst. The worst thing he could do right now is to hit me in the face. Unfortunately, he just chooses to trade um, to get rid of the spell power. Unfortunately for him, I didn't have anything with spell power in my hand, so it's okay. Right, so I now can play this. And that will cost two mana, and that will cost two mana. It's got seven health. That's four and set the perfect. Um, yeah, okay. All right. So fortunately for me, because of that trade they did, I was going to do that anyway, so I actually retained nine health because of his misplay. Once again, we're putting the Stealthers in the center of the board. Make it as hard as him, hard for him as I can really, to target with, it, with things. Next turn, I'm just going to play whatever I get and the Succubus, so it discards nothing, then tap, which would be nice. He's got five damage on board and five cards in hand, so three card in hand advantage on me. Because he just drew a card. And um Yeah, I obviously have board but advantage. This could go either way, I can't call this. I'm I, I it depends really on what a top deck. I don't really have many late game cards, if any. I've got like a Stormwind Champion for 7 mana, I'm pretty sure, which obviously would be pretty nice in this situation because I've got that many minions on, on the board, but I don't know, I can't call this game. I don't feel all that confident. Alright, so he uses 2 damage there to hit the summoning portal, doing not much, and summons a 1-1 one -one with the last of his mana, so that's cool for me. Still, he's got card advantage. Alright, so um, that works. Could do the exact damage I need to kill that. Alright, we tap here. And we get a very cheap Yeti. That is beautiful. So on board he has six damage. And five cards in hand to my zero. I would be worried about that fact if I did not have a life tap. Obviously I wouldn't play like this, I wouldn't just throw all my cards out there. That would be insane if I wasn't a warlock. When you have a warlock power like life tap where you 
can just draw a card every turn, it's worth it to just make use of that. Anyway, he uses four of his damage to kill the summoning portal, which works for me because I've got nothing left. And Avenging Wrath. Oh, God. Yes. The Blood Imp survived. <laughs> that works really well for me. Oh, God. Ooh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, God, Blood Imp. You are a king. You're a king. You've been here the whole game, man. Since turn one. Oh, hello, my friend. Uh, we're just going to tap before we play you, though. Um... It's a shame about you. You're going to have to die here to something. It doesn't matter which. Probably should have put that to the right of the imp, but it's okay. It's not actually a mage with a cone of cold, so it doesn't matter all that much. Still, this has been a back and forth game, both on 24 health. It's kind of like, as soon as he runs out of steam, because he's a paladin, as soon as he starts playing a lot of cards and I gain control of the board, it's over, I win. But it's obviously very hard for me to do that because of his, uh, his, his power reinforce. Okay, so I can give him a mana here. He's going to have 10 mana irrelevant, so that's fine. But I am going to tap first. Um, so I can heal up and trade. I could kill his 2-4 and then heal everything back up, which would be nice. Or I can Arcane Golem. And kill his 2-4. And his 3-3. Free free. Leave him with a 1-1. One, one. Leaves me with a 3-1 one and a 1-1. One, one. He uses the 1-1 one, one to kill that. And then I've just got Blood Imp. And then these two. Which are both good cards in their own right. So oh, actually, what of that? Um, hmm. So, it's, do I want to retain the cards I've got? And kill a 2-4, leaving with 4 damage on board. Or do I want to top throw it all out there? And I think I'm going to hang on to that. I think the better play is to, um, to heal up. Because right now, what I want to do to win is have him use the cards that are in his hand. That's what I want. I want him to have essentially nothing left in his hand, and then I'll win. This is more of an endgame kill thing. Or, or I guess removal for free mana. It's still really good removal. Especially when he already has 10 mana, so it doesn't... The battle cry to give your opponent a mana crystal is worthless, doesn't mean anything. Pay attention, class. It's a good card. A little bit hard for me to deal with right now as well, because it's got 5 health. What I'm hoping to top deck is that uh, Stormwind Champion. Blessing of Kings, spell, spawns a 1-1, one, one, and then gives him a 7-7. Seven, seven. And a uh, Noble Sacrifice, which is another spell. Shockingly, he uses it to hit... Um, my Dark Scale Healer. One mana away from being able to play all of these, unfortunately. It's fine. I could make a free fall. Don't really want to do that right now. So 
we use the free free to kill the seven free. It's free damage there. So you can kill that. So yeah, I'm just gonna start hitting him. Um, and pass the turn and hold on to my cards. He's now got two cards in hand. I've got two cards in hand. I actually have card advantage now um, in hand and on board uh, because I also can light tap. I'm going to pull ahead now. I really do need to finish it though very soon. It's been a very tense game. Fun though, really fun. There's a weird bug here with this one just hanging around. Come on, mate. You don't have all that many plays now. <laughs> so, yeah. Uses all of the 1-1s one to kill the 4-3. Understandable. That's fine with me. What are you going to do with a 3-5? Really? Okay. Oh, and he's top decked an ogre. That is unfortunate for me, having just a big guy. Soul fire. Okay, that works. Give me a quest. And that works very well as well. So he's probably going to use the ogre to hit the 4-5. Puts his ogre down to free health. Oh no! Divine shield! Whatever is in hand there. And now he's completely out of cards. So if I'm able to gain control of the board here... I win the game. Another soul fire. My seal for Argus. Your turn to bleed. Hits with the ogre, puts it down to two health. Then I can use this blood imp to finish it. I had some good soul fires there as well. Uh, both of them I used and didn't lose anything because I had no cards in hand at the time. All right, we draw a yeti. That's nine mana. That's fine. We're going to use the Blood Imp to finish that. I'm just going to throw you down, throw you down. How much health damage he's got? He's got um, five. It's okay to draw, except I can't, so that's dumb stuff. And then we're just going to hit him. Again, he's out of cards, so I really just need to just go for him. I have nine damage, because this is probably going to die. No, 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 it might not. If it survives, we've got 12 damage on board. I've only got six cards left, though. This is scary. What a game, though. It's been fun. Anyway, probably going to use... No, it's just going to go for my face. Understandable. No. I, I can't. It's, it's like aiming all weird. Hello, Swampoos. Okay, so I have 9 health. On board right now, he has 4, 6 damage. That will put me to 7. Hmm. I wonder. I think tapping right now is a really bad idea. Very greedy. Oh, I only have five cards left. I can't keep drawing. Okay. I'm going to lower his damage as much as we can. There's four damage still on board. If he consecrates, it doesn't matter. 
It's got three damage right now. Puts me down to six. On board right now, I have um, 15 damage. One damage away from kill shot right now on board. He top decks a Fen Creeper. That is very fortunate for him. He kills the Swampoos. What a top deck. He uses the 1-1 one, one to kill the 5-1, and then I just beat the shit out of him with Adventure Go. Four cards left. Oh no. And I'm killable next turn, I've used the use. That's um... Oh god. Oh man. So that's... <laughs> oh my god, that's 12 damage there, plus the 2 damage from that, that's 14. Um, I play this and I die. I have to top deck something. You know, if I had you earlier, I would have won. Anyway, well played to the guy. He won by the skin of his teeth. He had some good top decks, I had some good top decks. And you know, um, I guess maybe I should have had ball control earlier. There's different ways I could have played that. But if you think you know the answer, then uh, please leave the comment and uh, explain to me what you think I should have done there to win that game. I am trying to get better as I go along. Anyway, now we're going to uh, end the video and then I'm going to record the next round of them. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.